The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Morning Markets Kickoff with your host, Tommy O'Brien. Now, Tommy O'Brien. Good Wednesday morning, everybody. I'm Tommy O'Brien coming to you live from TFNN just after 9 a.m. Eastern Time. We got markets accelerating higher. We might get an all time high print in the next few moments. We got the SPs up by 20 points right now, trading at 49.94. That's a gain of about four tenths percent. You see the acceleration on a five minute basis. The run begins at about 7.25 a.m. this morning. And since then, we're up about 25 points on the S&Ps approaching that 5,000 point mark. NASDAQ 100, we're up by about 95 points. That's about half a percent higher, trading at 17,765 right now. You jump over the Dow, up by 80 points. I gotta reset this. Anytime I hit the last, it thinks I'm trying to buy the thing or put in a bid. We have the Russell, up by six points this morning, up by two tenths percent. Russell trading at 1967, you jump over to Bitcoin. Just chopping around this week at about 43,365. You jump over to the crew contract, positive by 57 pennies, 73.88. We jump over to the gold contract this morning. Gold, yeah, I gotta reset that. Somehow I'm always popping up orders. Gold, up by a dollar right now at 2,052. We're as low as 2,030 yesterday. Talked about on the program yesterday, right? Taking a look at the dollar index, taking a look at the gold. You got the biggest 10 year auction ever at 1 p.m. Eastern time today. Interesting to see. Uh, how that auction goes, how the demand goes for that auction, how that's going to impact possibly yields. We have Fed speak going on today as well. We'll see how that impacts yields. And as we know, yields drive the dollar, drive commodities to a certain degree at least. Notes and bonds, speaking of. Yeah, I got to fix that one, man. They keep popping up. The tenure negative by two ticks this morning. We're dealing with a yield on the 10 year of about 4.11%. We were at about 4.15 yesterday. We were at 3.8% when this thing was at a high last week of 113.06. So still at above 4.1%, the yield on the 10 year. You get the two year, let's see where it is pulling up right now on the yield curve. I think we got the two year at about 4.16 or something like that. Where are we? Four point, no, excuse me, 4.41. Yes, 4.41%, the yield on the two-year. Yeah, 4.16. That would be basically the 10-year. That would make sense. 4.41 on the two-year this morning, uh, and that is basically flat on the two-year. And we jump over to the dollar index. As I mentioned, DXY, backing off a bit. So, interesting to see. You know, when I was on the air from 9 till 10, folks, right, you had the dollar at 104.40. And one of the things I was talking about was saying, man, dollar index has really accelerated higher. We have the gold contract chomping around. If you do get a potential pullback in that dollar index, look for potentially that you could get a lift in that gold contract. We get off the air at 10 o'clock. You're at 2050.46. Interesting, though, right? We were right back to where we were at 730 this morning. The point being that even as we continue to see the dollar behaving, it seems like the dollar right now, to put this thing on a daily basis before we jump around to some of the news of the day, and boy, we got a lot of headlines, man. Almost right at that one, uh, excuse me, 618 retracement, 104.73, and we might have a little bit of a rollover, man. Now, what would that mean? That would mean a weaker dollar, which should be happening at the same time as you get decreasing yields. OK, and maybe that was your acceleration, right? Maybe that was your market getting ahead of itself as in the dollar trades from 107 down to 101. You push back almost to a high of 104.60. And that gives you the impetus maybe to make that run eventually lower. And that is from what? About six weeks, December 28th. We were down there in the dollar at a 100 handle. We just almost got to 104.60 and we're backing off a bit. We're right at 104 on the dollar. All right, we got a lot to talk about. Where do we kick things off? Let's jump to the headlines and see. Let's kick it off with Disney. Why not? Interesting action in terms of how the, 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 the whole spectrum of streaming for, for sports is going to change. 
Uh, Disney investors search for clarity on elusive streaming profits. All right, now they report on Wednesday, but how about the deal out there? They're teaming up with Fox. They're teaming up with Warner Brothers. You got Fox and Warner Brothers trading higher this morning. That's Max. WDD. Yeah. So here's Warner Brothers Discovery. There's your acceleration yesterday on the news. They're teaming up with Disney and Fox. There's Disney. Actually trades lower on that news from 99.75 down to 98. Maybe you had a little bit of premium in here that they were just going to unload. ESPN, right? You always hear that talked about. Maybe Apple would be the buyer. Dan Ives has been out there pushing that for a while. Makes a lot of sense, but doesn't seem like that's what's coming down the line right now. They're teaming up with Fox. They're teaming up with Warner. And it'd be interesting to see how the details of this come out. Uh, the jokes running last night, rightfully so, are, hey, guess what? We got this great service for you. We're going to bundle all these different channels that you're going to love, and we're going to charge you one elevated fee for all of it combined. We'll call it cable to something to that degree. Uh, but nonetheless, things are changing. And if you're a sports team out there or you control sports rights, you're any one of the leagues, right? You're the NBA, the NHL, even the NFL. Probably don't want to see all those competitors that were at one point competing for those rights, teaming up together, going to be less competition. You still got plenty of participants out there, uh, Apple, Amazon, Netflix, accordingly. But nonetheless, Disney, Fox, and Warner Brothers, we'll see what they're going to charge for that. We'll see how it's going to come down the line. But nonetheless, Disney actually lower on that. You got Warner Brothers trading higher. And yeah, Warner Brothers, man, if you haven't tried Max yet, folks, it's pretty cool what they're putting together. So I cut the cord. Do not have cable at home. We got about every streaming service that you can have. I mean, let me think about it. We got Max. We got Netflix. We have Prime, of course. We have Disney, of course. Any others? I subscribed to Peacock for a month in order to get the playoff game that was on there recently. And so when it came time for New Year's Eve, right, I said to myself, you know, and this is where you're still learning about what's going on. I said, well, I wonder what's what I can get. Maybe I said, maybe Max, because HBO does do some live stuff. I know they do. I said, maybe Max. I watch Real Time with Bill Maher, Maher on there, and that's live. There's some stuff that they are on live. I said, maybe Max got something going on, right? Well, of course they do, because that's CNN, and they had Anderson Cooper and um, Andy Cohn on their live for New Year's Eve. And then they have a bunch of sporting on there. They have CNN for live news. And I found myself saying, I actually understood for the first time why Max – got away from the HBO name because it is so much more um, inclusive of a number of different aspects. I think that stock's got a lot of potential in the future, man. And you're seeing a rise of, what, almost 2.5% this morning, up to $10.32. They're inking a deal with ESPN and with Fox. And boy, that's going to control a lot of the sports spectrum out there. You're still going to have Peacock, but that's like five bucks a month and maybe some other. I was, I was listening to Bloomberg. They were doing some great discussions on this morning. This is going to be an expensive service, though. All right? We'll see. if Do you get it if you get HBO? There's still a lot of details to come out on this. We don't know what the price is going to be, et cetera. But nonetheless, interesting how it does change things going forward. So we have this market pushing higher. s and is up by 20 right now. NASDAQ 100 up by an even 100 on the open. Let's see how some of those FANG stocks are kicking things off. You jump over to Apple shares. FANG, that's an old term, right? That's dating me. Imagine that. You say the FANG stocks and you date yourself at this point, folks. Apple up $1.20. Not bad. You jump over to Microsoft shares, up about $2. You jump over to NVIDIA shares, basically flat at 682. And we got some Tesla news. Looks like they're going to be cutting jobs, man. Uh, stay tuned, folks. We're coming back. We're talking to our man Kevin Hinks from the Schwab Network Fast Market. We'll be right back in three minutes. If you're looking for potential trading setups in the stock market, then Rocket Equities and Options Report is a newsletter you should try. Tommy O'Brien delivers options and equity trades when the markets present them using a combination of fundamentals and technicals. Sign up for Rocket Equities and Options Report today with a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years 
years' experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com, educating investors. TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn, and he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, education investors. Welcome back, folks. We got S&P futures right now up more than 20 points. We're within about two points of all-time highs. We're trading at 49.95. We got the NASDAQ 100 up about 100 points right now to talk about some of the market action this morning. Let's jump over to our man, Kevin Hinks. Every trading day, folks, 12 noon Eastern time, right here from the Schwab Network. You got Fast Market with your host, Kevin Hinks, Tom White, the whole team. Man, we got Fed speak out there. We got earnings going on and we got markets within a hair of all time highs this morning. Kevin Hinks, good morning. Good morning, Tommy O'Brien. Yeah, we're going to knock on the door of 5,000 today, it looks like, that's for sure. I don't know if we'll get through it or we'll close through it, but we're, we're, we're certainly going to take a run at it today. And frankly, Tommy, in terms of top tier economic data, not much to get in the way of this market. Uh, this week's most of the earnings has been re relatively good not snap but chipotle's having a good morning um some of the bank uh worries from new york community bank they appointed a new executive chairman so that stock is up pre-market ever so slightly some of that risk dissipating but uh you know not a lot to get in the way here tommy so until we get some top tier economic data or some earnings. You know, we'll have some good earnings after the bell. Disney, PayPal, Arm Holdings um, are some of the names coming out with the earnings after the bell today. Those will be something to look at. But a couple bond auctions, a 10-year note, $42 billion in 10-year notes auction today. That will come out around noon. $25 billion in 30-year bonds auction tomorrow. So there's that. But uh, all things considered, still a lot of Fed speakers, one, two, three, four Fed speakers today. Uh, Neil Kashkari's already been out talking on national TV this morning. So here we are, Tommy, uh, working through some, a, little, a little chasm in terms of economic data, and the market seems to want to go higher. It's a great summation, man. I appreciate the, the roundup and taking a look at things. I, you beat me to the question in terms of cash car, Fed speak maybe, because I'm always trying to look at, get your opinion on what's going on right now. And as you kind of mentioned, a little bit of a vacuum, especially in terms of how much data we got last week, man. When you had Fed week, you had Jobs Friday, we had the biggest tech companies in the world pretty much crushing it. And then a little bit of a lull. Where are you looking out 
to right now, Kevin, you, you, you made the great point, and that's what I was going to ask you. You know, what is on the calendar right now in terms of what can really maybe not surprise or drive this market or news? We're getting Fed speak. That's one of them. Kashkari talking about maybe two to three cuts, maybe a few more months of data as some of the headlines out there to give us the confidence. So trying to put, you know, maybe frame where they're going to get that confidence from. But are you looking for anything, Kevin? We get the next meeting March 20th. That's a while away, man. Do, are we going to wait for the February data? How do you think about that right now as we go through this period? Well, you've got NVIDIA's earnings coming up here on the 21st. You're, I nice. mean, normally, Tony, what, when, when you have a week of very, uh, you know, no real top-tier economic data, it usually leads to the next week being very heavy in terms of economic data. So there'll, there'll be economic data next week. You still got NVIDIA's earnings, the last, you know, and that stock has run, you know, since, boy, the, the last <laughs> month. Oh. Sorry, you there, Kevin? Oh, did we lose him? We might have lost you, Kevin. Maybe he's there. All right, if my producer can let me know. Yeah, check out that run on for NVIDIA. This thing just doesn't stop, man. Maybe he's still there. I'm here. All right, perfect. Sorry, we lost you for a moment there, Kevin. I have NVIDIA up, the run it's made from 400 to 700 over the last three months. Yeah. Um, could you give us a little teaser on Disney, man? Some pretty big news last night on Disney, of course. They're teaming up with Warner. They're teaming up with Fox. That's where sports are going to go for right now. Um, this stock, though, Disney, trades lower, even on that news, man. Talk about very difficult to find a bid for that equity recently. Off the lows of 78, but underperforming as we know. What are you looking for, Disney, man, as they're going to be coming out with yeah. their numbers on the heels of that big announcement? down over a dollar pre-market on that news. Listen, these companies involved in streaming and all things, you know, linear TV, and they have to figure this out because NVIDIA has got the right, or I'm sorry, not NVIDIA, Netflix has the right, um, you know, they have the right business model. And just like you know, we're going to see play out in AI. There's going to be winners and losers. There's going to be competition. There was a cautionary note yesterday out on NVIDIA talking about all the things, all the problems that could come up. So I, I think Disney is still in the process of trying to figure out exactly what, how they manage this, this just empty hole of money that is going into streaming, Tommy. Yeah, it's going to be interesting to see as we start to maybe get maybe a few more details tonight about that deal. And maybe the market, not a, um, a little disappointed almost that they just didn't unload that property to Apple or something like that. I'm not sure. But like you said, trading down about a buck thirty on that thinkorswim platform. Uh, you mentioned it, but Kevin, but if you could go over it again, the stocks you're talking about, Disney may be one of them. But do you guys have three equities coming up as usual on Fast Market today at 12? Like Foley was going to be covering Disney today, we'll trade it in a middle second. We'll also look at Apple post earnings and what it's doing, firming up here now in the market. And then we'll look at PayPal that also has earnings nice. coming out. So three good names, Apple, Disney, and PayPal today. I'm always interested in that payment sector, man. PayPal talking around, jumping around at 63.71, and I got it at 3.10 a few, a couple of years ago. Remarkable. Kevin, I appreciate the time on a busy morning, man. We'll be watching Fast Market at 12 today, and I look forward to talking to you tomorrow as usual. Thanks for having me on, Tommy. Always a pleasure. Folks, check it out. You heard it. They're talking three great stocks. Apple, Disney, PayPal. Coming up at 12 o'clock today, they'll be setting up those trades. And, yeah, pretty interesting to see how that goes out. Disney, you make that deal, you trade lower, man. Very difficult to find a bid across the board. So, uh Iger, not willing to give up that asset, right? Not willing to give it up to Apple probably just yet. Trying to do another deal that keeps it in the fold for right now. But the market says, ah, we're down by $2 almost from where you were initially on that news. 98.05 for Disney shares this morning. As opposed to, as I mentioned, you got Warner Brothers, you got Fox, both trading higher. Warner Brothers up to 10.55 actually last night, back to 10.29. This morning, you jump over, they'll be covering Apple as well. Apple up about a buck thirty. This market, man. As Kevin said, we're knocking on the door, man. We're probably going to knock on that door 5,000. Do we get through it? We get to find out when supply equals demand on the opening bell in about four minutes from right now. But you got the S&Ps 
49.96, folks, within less than two points of all-time highs. And as I mentioned, so Tesla, finally getting a little bit of a pop. Be careful on Tesla, folks. I keep talking about it, okay? Be careful for Tesla, is what I would say. Uh, the cuts are coming, for sure. They got a massive demand problem here. And they are now asking which jobs are critical. Of course they're coming, okay? Managers have been queried on whether positions are needed. Sales growth slows as car market spends towards next growth wave. There's a lot going on in that company, man. And then the headline out here, this is almost like a troll from Bloomberg as we come into the open. I don't know what their market is supposed to be doing in Korea, but they sold one car. There is one Korean or one person living in Korea that bought a Tesla in the month of January. One, one single model. EV sales are hurt by inflation, and that number's down to one in Korea. Nonetheless, anecdotal, um, but the cuts are coming for Tesla. They'll be in a saving some money. Markets are up. We're at record highs. We're coming back on the open, folks. Stay tuned. Are you ready to take charge of your financial future? TFNN is your gateway to the world of trading and investing. Whether you're starting out or scaling up, TFNN empowers traders and investors of all skill levels with top-notch investing systems, strategies, and techniques. It's time to protect and grow your money with insight you can trust. Join us live Monday through Friday during market hours for exclusive content that moves with the markets. At TFNN, we bring the trading floor to you. Our seasoned hosts are here to answer your calls and questions live on the air. Check out the Tiger's Den for just $1 and follow us on YouTube and become part of our vibrant community. And remember, at TFNN, we're so confident in the value we provide that we offer a 30-day money-back guarantee on all new premium newsletter subscriptions and services. You have absolutely nothing to risk, so why wait? Tune in live to Tiger TV and transform your trading journey because when you know better, you invest better. Join us and experience the difference today. TFNN, educating investors. Currencies, commodities, and bond markets are as important as ever right now with how they're driving the volatility in equity markets across the globe, which is why it's a great time to try out Teddy Kegstat's Tiger Forex Report. Teddy Kegstat breaks down the Forex markets every Monday using his 30 plus years of experience as a trading veteran of futures, Forex, stocks, and options. Teddy releases his weekly Tiger Forex Report every Monday morning with coverage of all the major currency pairs, including the dollar index, the euro dollar, pound dollar, dollar Swiss, dollar yen as well as many more and he also has weekly coverage of the crude oil market and the 30-year t-bonds as they both influence forex markets tremendously when you sign up for the tiger forex report you also gain instant access to teddy's 60-minute webinar archive he just hosted forex strategies and fundamentals what is behind the tiger forex report for all the details and to start your 30-day tiger forex report subscription today visit the front page of tfnn.com tfnn educating investors are you ready to take your trading to the next level? Introducing Tom O'Brien's award-winning newsletter, Market Insights, your key to successful active trading. Tom O'Brien, renowned for his expertise in the financial markets, has designed Market Insights to be your daily guide to profitable trades. Tom publishes his daily Market Insights newsletter every market day before the market open, along with updates when warranted. Stay ahead of the game with Tom's real-time analysis and trade recommendations delivered straight to your inbox. Whether you're a seasoned trader or just starting out, Market Insights provides the edge you need to navigate the markets with confidence. Ready to join the ranks of successful traders? Head over to TFNN.com and subscribe to Market Insights today. Don't miss out on this opportunity to supercharge your trading results. Market Insights comes with a 30-day money-back guarantee for all new subscribers, so you have nothing to risk. Don't miss out on this opportunity to revolutionize your trading game. Head over to TFNN.com right now to join the thousands of traders who have already experienced the power of Tom O'Brien's award-winning newsletter, Market Insights, firsthand. TFNN, educating investors. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. Welcome back, folks. We got markets open. We have the S&Ps. Futures just hit an all-time high, 49.98. We were in the 49.97 something range in terms of the highs prior. We're just at that level right now. NASDAQ 100, we're up 103 points, making 105. 17,000, 779. Is that an all-time high? I think it might be. 793.50. Okay, 
17,793. So within about 30 points in the NASDAQ 100, you jump over to the Dow. Those highs just under 39,000. Russell, as we know, well off that price level right now. Look at that, right? The Russell is 25% away from its all-time highs, man. <sighs> Remarkable. S&Ps, right at that level right now. All right. We got a lot to jump through here. And we got uh, we got our man Teddy Cakes at coming up the next segment as well. Great day to have him on. We're going to talk some rates. We're going to talk some Forex, as we always do. We'll talk a little bit of crude, some gold as well. So that's coming up the next segment. But yeah, let's jump around to some of the headlines, man. And we got plenty this morning. Kevin referenced it. Neil Kashkari, so the Minneapolis Federal Reserve president, said today that he expects the central bank to cut rates only a few times this year. OK, sitting here today, I would say two or three cuts would seem appropriate for me right now. But again, I don't want to prejudge things, but that's that's my gut based on the data we have so far. We just need to look at the actual inflation data to guide us. So far, the data has been resoundingly positive. I hope it continues. And then the question will simply be, at what pace do we then start to adjust rates back down? Right. There are compelling arguments to suggest to suggest we could be in a longer, higher rate environment going forward. That's the part I really wanted to get to. Quite a strong statement from a Fed president. Keep that one at least as a risk in some degree out there. Uh, if that's the case, then yes, we may get some cuts, but you got a tenure right now at 4.1%. If we are in a higher for longer environment going forward, where does that 10 end up? And if that 10 doesn't end up dramatically lower, how much does the Fed really have to cut? In this existence that we had for 20 plus years where we were near a 0% interest rate and we weren't quite there, okay, but we were lower than we should have been for the economic growth that we experienced during that time, we were lower than we should have been. And I feel like that is resetting to a certain degree. So pay attention to that quote in most particular fashion. Compelling arguments to suggest that we could be in a longer, higher rate environment going forward. And he's looking for two to three rate cuts. Folks, two to three. Three only brings you down to 4.5 to 4.75. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And we got the two year right now at 4.4. So if you're getting two to three cuts this year, the two should be dramatically higher than 4.4. If even after one year, we're still sitting at 4.7, because that means over two years, you should average 4.4. Right. Uh, nonetheless, you get the point. He's out there speaking. We get more speak as well. And yeah, we talked about Tesla. The one part I wanted to get to in this chart, I mean, they put it right up on the front page of Bloomberg, I think. Let's see. Do they? I think they did. Yeah. I mean, check out. Let me just blow this up real quick. You talk about a slowdown, man. Okay. This is revenue change percentage wise. Okay. So if you're just at zero, your revenue is staying the same. Okay. So this is not a decline or something like that. This is revenue change year over year. But folks, you were rising in revenue. This isn't going back to like 1995. This isn't going back to year 2000. This is the beginning of 2021. 75% growth, 97, 58, 71. This is Tesla, 87. Okay, and then what happens? Do you remember at the beginning of 2022 when Elon was blaming everything on higher rates? Okay, well, guess what? That's when we dipped to 43% growth in second quarter of 2022. You go to 55, you go to 33, you go to 18, you go to 45, you go to five, and you go to one. Be careful with Tesla, folks. I would not be owning Tesla right now, even at these share prices. And you know, it doesn't mean the thing does, can't come back to highs, okay? And, and I got no problem with Elon and investing in some of his equities at some degree, but the risk is too high right now with everything going on with Tesla. Yes, you're going to get some volatile moves. So I understand if, you know, to, if you take that risk, you might get rewarded. That's a fair assessment. But boy, be careful, folks out there for Tesla. They're going to be making layoffs and that's not going to solve their problem. And look at this market. Oh, let's put it back to a 15 minute. Did we get it? No, we didn't get 5,000 yet. 49.9925. All right, we jump around. Some of the equities with numbers. Uber shares, they were higher, not so fast. They dip a little lower. They're down by 2%. But boy, this thing has had quite a run recently. You back it up on the daily, right? You were just trading at a price point of $40 on October 26th, and you just hit 70. That's a 75% acceleration from the lows in October. We jump over to Uber earnings, and they had strong new earnings. Yeah, they beat estimates as revenue and booking see double-digit growth. Revenue for the quarter up 15%. 
from the same period a year ago, almost $10 billion. Um, they marked a year of sustainable, profitable growth for Uber as consumer spending continues to shift from retail to services. Is the number out there? Net income, $1.4 billion on that $10 billion that they took in. But the market's looking for a little bit more, right? They're, they're up 75% from where they were October uh, 26, folks. Okay, for the first quarter this year, gross bookings, 37 to 38.5 billion. The estimate was 37.4. So the median, the middle of that range is gonna be above there. Anticipates EBITDA, 1.26 to 1.34. The market was looking for the bottom sector of that. Active platform consumers reached 150 million in the fourth quarter. It was 131 a year earlier. Mobility, that's gross bookings, 19.3 billion. Delivery, 17, just remarkable, man. But guess what? A simple case of um, expectations, sky high, they pull back a bit. Not really a stratospheric beat when the equity is up 75% from where it was trading at um, just over three months ago. All right, what else we got? Yeah, how about Target? This one's interesting, man. Uh, I don't blame them for wanting to be in the next Amazon. The retailer is looking for ways to reverse sales declines. A new offering can incorporate shipped, its delivery business. So they're going to uh, offer a paid membership program. Probably about time, right? You got Walmart Plus, you got Amazon Prime, Target, not exactly those companies, okay, but probably large enough to have something to the degree. And boy, they got a great, great brand. So it'll be interesting to see what they can put together here. You jump over to Target shares. They're up by 2.2%. On that news, trading at 147.63. But yeah, as we mentioned, man, you know, quite a different story compared to the Walmarts and the Amazons. Amazon off the highs as well, but this thing's still almost cut in half from where you were trading back in the end of 2021 at $268.98. You compare that to a company like Walmart, very successful as consumers. You know, you've heard Walmart talk about it, right? A different echelon, even on the income spectrum, in terms of shopping at Walmart, higher income earners, shopping at Walmart, everybody's looking to save in this economy. Target, different story, man. You jump over to Amazon shares, 169.97, up about half a percent, still about 18 bucks off all-time highs, but we're in that range for Amazon shares, in that range. Let's see how Tesla's trading. Tesla, they give back some of it, up by 1.4% so far. You jump over to Disney, down by 1.6% on their news. You jump to Warner Brothers Discovery, uh-oh, they give it up just like that. That was a short-lived experience. Negative prices for Warner Brothers Discovery, the market a little bit worried about that partnership, it seems. NASDAQ, up about a half a percent. We got markets reaching records. S&Ps within one point to 5,000. We're gonna be talking some Forex with our man Teddy Kegstat. When we come back, folks, don't miss it. We'll be right back in three minutes. Are you ready to take charge of your financial future? TFNN is your gateway to the world of trading and investing. Whether you're starting out or scaling up, TFNN empowers traders and investors of all skill levels with top-notch investing systems, strategies, and techniques. It's time to protect and grow your money with insight you can trust. Join us live Monday through Friday during market hours for exclusive content that moves with the markets. At TFNN, we bring the trading floor to you. Our seasoned hosts are here to answer your calls and questions live on the air. Check out the Tiger's Den for just $1 and follow us on YouTube and become part of our vibrant community. And remember, at TFNN, we're so confident in the value we provide that we offer a 30-day money-back guarantee on all new premium newsletter subscriptions and services. You have absolutely nothing to risk, so why wait? Tune in live to Tiger TV and transform your trading journey because when you know better, you invest better. Join us and experience the difference today. TFNN, educating investors. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. 
the Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, fighting the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Will the S&P 500 continue to climb? For bold trades on U.S. large cap stocks in either direction, trade SPXL, SPUU, or SPXS. Direction's daily S&P 500 bull and bear leveraged ETFs. Direction leveraged ETFs. An investor should carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risks, charges, and expenses before investing. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a fund's prospectus and summary prospectus, call 866-476-7523 or visit directioninvestments.com. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold. Traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. Welcome back, folks. We have the S&P pulling it back a bit as we almost touch that 5,000 price point. We're trading right now at 49.94. You're still positive by about 20 points or about four tenths percent. And as we do each Wednesday at 40 past the hour, folks, let's jump over to our man Teddy Kegstad. Folks, you can check out Teddy's outstanding Tiger Forex report right under the newsletter tab. You'll see it there. You can subscribe for $97 a month, folks. Comes out every Monday. Updates throughout the week when warranted, comes with a 30-day money-back guarantee, and boy, there's so much going on in terms of Forex, yields, driving the dollar, driving commodities, and we got some action. Teddy Kegsack, good morning. Good morning, Tommy. Uh, boy, amazing the moves we've had since a week ago on Wednesday. Yields back about 4%, man. The whole conversation seems like it shifted a bit. Um, pretty remarkable. We talked to you last week before the Fed had even spoken. When you think about how things reverberate on a weekly basis, um, where do you want to kick things off, man? Quite a week since we talked to you seven days ago. Yeah, well, we had a nice reaction. You know, I think pretty much what we talked about last week, we prepared ourselves quite well for that. Um, so we we rode that kind of wave pretty nice, I think, going into the end of the week last week. So, And I like to speak that's kind of coming out. It's starting to hit the tone, like I've been saying, for over a month and a half, that the media is getting way too ahead of, ahead of itself as far as when a rate cut is going to come in. And also, if three quarters is all they're going to cut over the course of a year or whatever it is, uh, the market's already factored in how much of that, you know, which we've been talking about for a long time. So this limbo period with rates, I think, is going to be something we have to live with for a while you know especially over the next couple of months um, there's still some numbers you have to watch out when it comes to the FX markets like this week there's nothing for the dollar coming out anymore really except for unemployment claims tomorrow which the way interest rates reacted on Friday that was I mean look at how they, they acted off the Fed and then unemployment's what really set yields off you know because they don't like this with the, uh, you know, wage growth and uh, job growth and stuff like that. So if unemployment sure. claims come out shorter, you know, if they start to keep tracking in that direction, like it seems like that's going to be that way. Um, I'd be careful to watch the uh, the interest rates catching a bid, you know, as far as um, in pricing going up. Granted, we have the auctions the next couple of days. So you can expect some kind of goofy volatility, especially in the afternoons. Um, so I'd be careful with that. You know, if I was just on the bond futures and 10 year futures, if you're trading those, I'd be very cautious the next couple of days. You know, I'd probably wait it out until after Thursday's number because um, just you're going to probably get some erroneous spikes, if anything, off the auction. You know, I don't think you're sure. going to get a solid trend, you know, because if anything, what's the auction going to do? Do you think the auction is going to start a trend? No, it's not going to do that. It's just going to set the algos on fire. It's going to be a matter of how much how much liquidity comes in, how much buying really want is, interest is there going to be, you know. So and I wouldn't want to try and play that game. Uh, right now, I think that you're having you hit a nice low in the dollar a couple days ago. Um, you know, we had we had downside targets for the euro. US 
U.S. dollar and the pound and some other currencies, and those hit nice areas just like the dollar index did, you know, as far as the upside, you know. So I think that we, we're coming off a nice correction zone, and I think that over the next couple of days into next week, you'll probably see dollar under pressure. But I wouldn't get overzealous with anything when it comes to as far as how much the dollar is going to move. I would just be right now – sell rallies in the dollar right now by buy dips in the other currencies you know i could see you know the euro us dollar and the pound dollar getting a nice little lift um the yen you know they had a nice outside day yesterday but all it's doing is targeting them back into the center of the range they've been in for the last month so do i see the yen us dollar yen going down yeah on an intraday basis probably into friday um but i would use cautious uh, caution i don't think you're going to get a big move Nice. That was a nice little wrap up, man. I was jumping through some of those charts as you were doing it. And yeah, um, you know, pretty cool to see some of those inflection points. And you've had some great calls, man, um, as things have played out. And I wanted to ask you about kind of one of the points you made in terms of some of those rates, of course, already into the market. We got the 10 year at about 4.1 today. We're as low as almost 3.8 last week, a little bit of a reverberation. And one of the things you had Kashkari out here saying today is that we might be in a period of, you know, higher for longer. Um, going forward to some degree, and I found myself saying, well, if we're higher for longer and we're sitting at 4.1 right now, where does that 10 end up at some degree? Do you have any thoughts on that? Or, and it kind of speaks to what you were talking about, but I was just wondering how you take something like that, how you think about it, and then you look, you mentioned you know, the 10-year, the futures, et cetera, going out even a little bit longer than maybe a couple days. Where do, you, where do you try and think about that one as we go out maybe you know, months, as we do start getting some of those cuts? Because you make the great point, man, if there's only three cuts, and the Fed's at 5.5 right now, and the 10 years at 4.1. There's a lot of that already factored in, and, and so are we going to be around 4% on the 10 year? Do you think about that? How's your brain think about that one? Oh, absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. And I think I, I heard you talking earlier, and that does go in line with what I think. And remember, last week I was also telling you how the short terms are really driving the uh, the yields right now, and yes. and that's kind of where we're at. The 30 year obviously holds rates in the long term, and with this where we're at, we know that okay. Even if they were just, let's say, hike, they're not doing more than a quarter point. You know what I mean? Sure. Like, let's say all of a sudden inflation starts to kick up and then they would be on, yeah. OK, we're going to do a quarter. We're going to pause and we're going to probably lean towards cutting again. You know, so we know that the hawkishness is, is pretty much off the table, but not gone, you know, but also as far as dovishness, how much do you get? I mean, three quarters of a point over the course of a year. Remember when they first started raising interest rates? I mean, they did over a point and a half in, in, in how short of a time, you know, let alone yeah. a half a point or a point you know so now you're looking at 12 months for three quarters of a point which the like the market's already factored in so i think that the, the short terms like the two the five and the ten are going to still push that, that boundary especially the tenure like you said into that area i like that as a, as a target range for sure but once you get to that area I'd be careful because that's when you're going to see the swing where the, the, the third year is going to catch up with the short terms and start to push highs. And when that starts to get stretchy and starts really spiking, the, the short terms are not going to spike anymore because they're done. And once those start to turn, because the short terms are obviously drive rates in the short term, long term overall, you know, so that for the trend first shifts with the short terms. You know, the only time it shifts with the long term first is when you have major monumental events, you know, like. If, if all of a sudden we go to like the U.S. troops go into war, like with Taiwan, I would think that the 30 year is going to catch a bid, at least in the short run. You know, it doesn't matter what's going on in the economy. You know what I mean? So that would be a situation where the 30 year would override the short runs, you know, um, because yeah. that's just flight to quality. It's just what you do is sure. how things can happen, you know. But, yeah, I like what you're saying. And, and I think that that's the tone people really need to keep in perspective is. Don't expect much out of the interest rate market. It's pretty much done. I mean, we know that as far as rate going up, that's that's over. Going down, there's not much to go. You know. Right. So right. Um, now, unless we have something where, let's say, all of a sudden unemployment skyrockets. Like, let's say we go all of a sudden to six percent unemployment and have a huge deflationary environment that somehow just. I don't know, comes out of nowhere. Maybe sure. Santa Claus all of a sudden drops off all this stuff at every Walmart or something. I don't know. I don't know. You know, I don't know what scenario oh, you can use. We all but know these it, things come out of nowhere these days for sure. Right. Go ahead. Yeah. Right. But but let's say that does occur. Okay. Then you're looking at that situation where you could see a big easing bit bias. But you know, I, like I said, I, I can't I can't go far into fan. I have to go into fantasy land to try and find those you know those opinions and objectives. You know. So I that's, I just yeah. don't want to throw those out there. I mean. 
mean, anything can happen. We know that. You know, you're more likely going to have an algo spike that happens because of an error in technology to get to those levels for a brief time than you are because of a trend, I think. You know. I appreciate the take, man. It makes a lot of sense. It does. Uh, can you hang with us for the break? Maybe we'll talk a little bit of crude if we can to finish it up uh, after uh, I the could, break. I, All could right? do, I could do one last segment. Yes, sir. Okay, perfect. We'll be right back, folks. We'll talk a little bit of crude. We'll finish up with our man, Teddy Kegstat. We'll be right back. We got markets in positive territory right near all-time highs. Stay tuned with us. Teddy and I will be right back, folks. The Gold Report. As a precious metal, gold is still king. It continues to hold the most effective safe haven and hedging properties across the global major trading hubs of the London OTC market, the U.S. futures market, and the Shanghai Gold Exchange. The Gold Report. Tom O'Brien publishes his weekly gold report every Monday morning for subscribers, consisting of coverage of the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, bonds, the South African Rand, as well as 25 different mining equities with specific buy-sell recommendations. The Gold Report. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Subscribe to Tom O'Brien's Gold Report newsletter now at TFNN.com. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. The reality is that navigating financial markets can be risky. Markets can be chaotic and difficult to understand. Having the latest market advice can help you turn this chaos into a key for creating winning trades. At TFNN, we understand that it can be hard to find reliable market news. That's why each of our market experts offers their very own market newsletter, a must-have tool for every trader out there striving to find an edge in today's markets. TFNN newsletters cover every aspect of the markets so you can analyze the market before you trade. Try any of our great newsletters risk-free with our 30-day money-back guarantee. Just visit the Newsletters tab on the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. Welcome back, folks. We got the S&Ps up by 18 points, trading at 49.92. We almost made it to 5,000. We're back a bit. We're talking to our man, Teddy Kegstat. We're talking a little bit of Forex. And I wanted to get your take on crude, Teddy. Quite the pullback, of course, last week uh, to this Monday, $71. We have been talking about maybe the high, some great action there in our conversation. We're back to $73 and change. What do you think about that crude market? Uh, you know, we can definitely talk about crude, especially the Tiger Forex report readers. You know, we had that sell signal a couple of weeks ago that, you know, played into our hand into Friday's low. We got the little um, test of it on uh, Monday. We peaked a little bit lower, a couple ticks, and then reversed and had basically an unchanged day. That was a nice little high probable cat Japanese candlestick turning point, meaning that um, probably that swing low is pretty solid for at least a few sessions, I would think. I would watch out. Now, today is critical. If Let's say we close where we're at right now. That would give us a nice little positive bounce off of uh, – 
of a Monday's low. If we reverse gears tomorrow and sell off in the crude market, I would be very cautious that we could probably take out the lows from this week. That means that we're going to probably get bearish and try and get back down towards that probably 70 to 68 area. Now, in the opposite, if we hold up today, like let's say we settle where we're at today and then all of a sudden we catch a rally and settle definitely positive tomorrow. Well, then we're in the heart of the range we've been in for the past couple of months. It's going to be, you know, a 70, you know, five dollar treading around there poking around 76 77 back to 75 you know you really have to take out that high from a couple of weeks ago at around 79 i think it was around 79 78 half you know sure. if you do that then i can see us going up to that 81 to 84 dollar range but the oil markets seem pretty tame i mean geopolitical stuff hasn't seemed to shake the boat too much it's helping them hold us in a range um i just don't see us to have any really big bullish reason to take off right now now especially with yields if yields also keep on retracting if they keep the lease sideways to lower um then it's going to be hard for crude to catch a bid too because if the dollar's under pressure and yields are under pressure cost of carry goes down for crude that helps to suppress prices you know and also demand uh, level changes as well so i think that we're we're stuck in a wide range trade i'd be cautious watch those levels we take out the low from monday look out below and if we hit get a positive close today and especially tomorrow we could you know push a bit we gotta run teddy i